This video is sponsored by Film Convert. Yep, that's right, another how to make your footage more cinematic video on YouTube. I know a lot of you who are professional filmmakers wince and cringe when you see content creators talk about cinematic footage as if what their mirrorless cameras, RGB tube lights, and super slow-mo footage can do is somehow an insult to your craft. The bottom line is we're all having fun. We're all doing what we're passionate about, pushing ourselves to try to emulate the movies and TV shows and media channels we love. And in this video, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring and point out three things that I think you can do to make your footage for whatever you're making more cinematic. So what three things are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about movement, practicals, and film emulation, specifically film emulation in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro using Film Convert's excellent Nitrate plugin. I wanna thank Film Convert for making this video possible. Their sponsorship of this video allowed me to really go all out on a video demonstrating the cinematic look that their footage helps filmmakers and content creators achieve. More on that in a bit. Now to demonstrate these cinematic techniques, I needed a scene or portions of a scene to shoot. And to create a scene, I needed an idea for a fake movie that could serve as the foundation for everything I'm gonna do in this video. So let me take a moment to describe the film the scene you'll see in a bit comes from. The film is called Threadbare, and it's about an FBI agent in Omaha, Nebraska, Isaiah Carter, played by me, who's investigating the murder of a senior airman serving in the Air Force at the United States Strategic Command, also known as STRATCOM. STRATCOM is the subterranean bunker where President Bush was flown after the terrorist attacks on 9-11. The bunker, designed to withstand a nuclear blast, is located 40 feet underground and has enough space and rooms to serve as a hotel for the president and his team. When Isaiah's brother, a YouTuber who's obsessed with revealing unconstitutional and illegal activities in the U.S. government, disappears after he's linked to the murder of that senior airman, Isaiah is removed from the investigation investigation by the FBI. Hell-bent on finding his brother, Isaiah continues his investigation on his own only to discover a shocking link between the massive data centers big tech corporations are constructing in the Omaha area and the United States military's strategic command. Will Isaiah follow in his brother's footsteps and become consumed with discovering the truth? or will he fall in line to keep his job and preserve the status quo? I want you to think of this as a thriller in the vein of 70s classics like Marathon Man, Three Days of the Condor, and The Parallax View. And what we filmed are a few shots that would be part of a larger montage where Isaiah goes from an aimless agent removed from his case to a defiant investigator who's picking up where his brother's investigation left off. The shots I'm gonna show you together don't make a coherent scene, but again, think of them as part of a larger scene where we see our protagonist transformed from lost and aimless to suddenly full of purpose and initiative. Now, to make this shoot possible, I needed a crew, and the first two fellas I thought to call were Ian Snyder and Cody Jones. You've all seen Cody on the channel in a few of my videos, but Ian is a newcomer, even though I've worked with Ian on several projects locally. So for this shoot, Cody acted as first AC, handling the camera build, lens swaps, and of course, pulling focus. Ian handled camera operation and really took lead on the cinematography and gaffing, with Cody and I giving our input and assisting as needed. I directed the shoot and played our main character, the conflicted FBI agent, Isaiah Carter. And again, thanks to Film Convert's sponsorship of this video, I was not only able to rent some equipment from our local rental house, I was able to hire Cody and Ian for the shoot and put a little coin in their pocket to help support the local film community. So let's take a look at the shots from the scene that don't incorporate movement, practicals, or film emulation. We kept these shots locked off as if they were on a tripod. We didn't have any lamps or light fixtures visible in the frame, but we did light the scene using a key light, which was my Aperture 120D with Light Dome 2 softbox. And in two of the shots, we used my WeLight K21 tube lights effect mode to mimic the light a television would cast on our main character. Now the grade you'll see is Cody's grade using DaVinci Resolve, but there's no film emulation from Film Convert Nitrate being used. You're gonna have to watch through to the end of the video to see that film emulation in action. So let's take a look at that scene. I think this is uh, just a coincidence that all these big tech data centers are being built around one of the biggest military installations in the country. This is Stratcom Strategic Command, the center of uh, the, the military mind. Uh, this is where the president came after 9-11. Uh, it's got an underground fortress newly constructed and renovated by a Fortune 500 construction company based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Don't tell me that they aren't tunneling all of this data from Google 
Google, from Meta, from Amazon, from all of these servers, straight into Stratcom so they can spy on U.S. citizens, so they can spy on, on, uh, on foreign citizens, so they can spy on all of us and, and listen to our conversations and read our emails and do everything they can to understand everything we do, every move we make, every thought we think. Do you think it's a coincidence that it's here? Give me a break. I know what's happening inside there. I, I have contacts at, 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 at Stratcom, and, and they've told me things, that, that there's there's things going on that they're not comfortable with. They want to blow the whistle, but they're afraid for their lives. I, I, I'm afraid for my life. I mean, what if they come after me? And you know what I say to that? Bring it on. Let the truth come out. This is unconstitutional. It's illegal, and it needs to stop. And if there's anybody who's going to do this and blow the lid off this thing, it's going to be me. So you know, it looks pretty good. My Canon C300 Mark II has a really pleasing image, especially when paired with the Canon Cine lenses, and Cody's color grade really makes for a moody scene. Something that maybe you'd see in an independent film or in an aspiring filmmaker's short film. But we really want our footage to be heightened, to have a bit more depth and power, and that's where adding movement comes in. Now I watch a lot of movies and streaming television, shows like True Detective, Ozark, The Outsider, and one thing I see in a lot of these shows are shots with incredibly subtle movement a slow push-in using a dolly. You almost have to stare at the edges of frame to perceive the movement, but it creates this feeling of dread, of paranoia, of something sinister lying in wait. So we went to Lights on Nebraska, our local film equipment rental house, and rented their Dana dolly with four foot of rails so we could mimic these slow dolly moves for our film. So let's take a look at the same shots, but now with movement using a Dana dolly. Do uh, you think this is uh, just a coincidence that all these big tech data centers are being built around one of the biggest military installations in the country? This is Stratcom Strategic Command, the center of uh, the, the military mind. Uh, this is where the president came after 9-11. Uh, it's got an underground fortress newly constructed and renovated by a Fortune 500 construction company based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Don't tell me that they aren't tunneling all of this data from Google, from Meta, from Amazon, from all of these servers straight into Stratcom so they can spy on U.S. citizens, so they can spy on, on, uh, on foreign citizens, so they can spy on all of us and, and listen to our conversations and read our emails and do everything they can to understand everything we do, every move we make, every thought we think. Do you think it's a coincidence that it's here? Give me a break. I know what's happening inside there. I, I have contacts at, at, at Stratcom and, and they've told me things that, that there's there's things going on that they're not comfortable with. They want to blow the whistle, but they're afraid for their lives. I, I, I'm afraid for my life. I mean, what if they come after me? And you know what I say to that? Bring it on. Let the truth come out. This is unconstitutional. It's illegal, and it needs to stop. And if there's anybody who's going to do this and blow the lid off this thing, it's going to be me. I really think that's an improvement. There's something more engaging about it to really drive home the emotion of our character and the overall mood and tone of this film. But can we make it even more cinematic? I think we can. Now, Patrick Tommaso made an excellent video essay on his YouTube channel, I highly recommend subscribing, where he talked about how directors, cinematographers, and production designers of some pretty iconic films use practicals, we're talking lamps, ceiling fixtures, sconces, to create some really remarkable shots. And just like Patrick says, it's something you don't really notice when you're watching, but these lamps and practicals are everywhere in film and TV. So we embraced this with our film and shot our scene with practicals to give it more depth, richness, and well, really a more cinematic aesthetic. We used Aperture's B7C LED light bulbs in all of our practicals, and they worked great. They're dimmable, you can control the color temperature, and they're ridiculously easy to control using the Citus Link app on your iPhone. Now, I'll have links to all the lights we use for this video in the description below, so be sure to check it out if you're interested in doing anything like what we did. Now, let's take a look at the same scene with movement and practicals.
a, you think this is uh, just a coincidence that all these big tech data centers are being built around one of the biggest military installations in the country? This is STRATCOM, Strategic Command, the center of uh, the, the military mind. Uh, this is where the president came after 9-11. Uh, it's got an underground fortress newly constructed and renovated by a Fortune 500 construction company based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Don't tell me that they aren't tunneling all of this data from Google, from Meta, from Amazon, from all of these servers straight into STRATCOM so they can spy on U.S. citizens, so they can spy on, on, uh, on foreign citizens, so they can spy on all of us and, and listen to our conversations and read our emails and do everything they can to understand everything we do, every move we make, every thought we think. You think it's a coincidence that it's here? Give me a break. I know what's happening inside there. I, I have contacts at, at, at Stratcom and, and they've told me things that, that there's there's things going on that they're not comfortable with. They want to blow the whistle, but they're afraid for their lives. I, I, I'm afraid for my life. I mean, what if they come after me? You know what I say to that? Bring it on. Let the truth come out. This is unconstitutional. It's illegal and it needs to stop. And if there's anybody who's going to do this and blow the lid off this thing, it's going to be me. So the use of practicals in these shots makes a huge difference. Not only do they add depth and visual interest to the frame, they give the cinematographer something they can use to motivate some cinematic lighting. An edge light, a rim light, a hair light. Those subtle touches can really be the difference maker in your film's overall aesthetic. Now in this shot in the dining room, I love the reflection of a lamp that's out of frame in the TV. When we were lighting this shot, the TV looked like this giant black square behind our protagonist's head. It was this odd negative negative space that just needed to be filled, so Cody and Ian and I decided to add a practical along the wall of the living room that could be reflected in the TV. You don't really notice it at first, but it just fills the frame in a very pleasing way. Now in this shot, we felt like the clock needed something. It was just too flat and didn't look right, so we saw it as an opportunity to reflect light of a practical that's out of frame. So we used one of Cody's Source 4 lights and bounced it off the ceiling to catch a reflection in the glass of the clock. It's subtle, but it's adding a little detail to the shot that you may not notice at first, but on a subconscious level, it's really pleasing to your eye. At least I think it is. And in this shot, the practical from the dining room motivates a little hair light on the back of my head. We used my mini mole tungsten light to kick a little warm light onto the back of my head, and that little bit of rim light helps to separate me from the background and give a more dynamic look to the shot. So even if you don't have a lot of lamps or sconces in your own home or apartment, or maybe your characters aren't even the type of people who would have a bunch of warm, dimly lit lamps in the places they live, think about adding them to your scenes because of what they can do to enhance the image, what they can do to give your cinematographer some exciting options for color contrast, depth in the frame, and externalizing your character's emotions through lighting. And continue to watch movies and television shows and keep an eye out for practicals that they use in their scenes where maybe it doesn't make sense for the character, but it really looks good on film. You'll see a lot of choices in movie and television shows that if you really think about it don't make a lot of sense, but it's just so cinematic. All right, now the last thing that we're going to add to round out our cinematic treatment of this footage is film emulation. We partnered with Film Convert so we could use their excellent nitrate plugin to emulate some motion picture film and add subtle yet pleasing film grain to the image. Now I've been working with Cody for years on various projects, both for my company, Midland Pictures, and for this YouTube channel. And I wanted to partner with him on this video, not only to help shoot it, but to harness his professional color grading skills to really make this footage as cinematic as possible. So Cody and I spent the day in his color suite working in DaVinci Resolve with the Film Convert Nitrate plugin to really dial in the color correction, color grade, and film emulation for Threadbare, our fake movie. Now, Cody's used Film Convert Nitrate in the past on several projects, most recently using their film grain tools on an independent feature film he worked on as DIT and Colorist. So one of the things I really love about Film Convert Nitrate is the uh, grain response curve. It just uh, allows you to map how the grain responds over your everything from black up to white, shadows, mid-tails, highlights in between. And they already have a profile set depending on what film stock you get or choose, and then you can modify it, which is really helpful. And that's super key because using a grain overlay or other grain plugins, they don't 
take care of that aspect of it. So if you capture just gray for overlay with a film stock and then overlay that over the footage, it doesn't respond in the same way that film actually would respond when it's being exposed to light. And so, yeah, like as you can see here, the blacks and the whites actually are very minimal with grain. And then uh, in this particular stock, you can see the shadows have a little higher grain response than the highlights. And depending on what stock you choose, Film Convert's done their homework and has designed the curve accordingly per each film stock, which is really cool. Now let's take a look at the same scene with all three components present, movement, practicals, and film emulation. Uh, you know, I think this is uh, just a coincidence that all these big tech data centers are being built around one of the biggest military installations in the country. This is Stratcom Strategic Command, the center of uh, the, the military mind. Uh, this is where the president came after 9-11. Uh, it's got an underground fortress newly constructed and renovated by a Fortune 500 construction company based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Don't tell me that they aren't tunneling all of this data from Google from Meta, from Amazon, from all of these servers, straight into Stratcom so they can spy on U.S. citizens, so they can spy on, on, uh, on foreign citizens, so they can spy on all of us and, and listen to our conversations and read our emails and do everything they can to understand everything we do, every move we make, every thought we think. You think it's a coincidence that it's here? Give me a break. I know what's happening inside there. I, I have contacts at, 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 at Stratcom and, and they've told me things that, that there's there's things going on that they're not comfortable with. They want to blow the whistle, but they're afraid for their lives. I, I, I'm i afraid for my life. I mean, what if they come after me? You know what I say to that? Bring it on. Let the truth come out. This is unconstitutional. It's illegal, and it needs to stop. And if there's anybody who's going to do this and blow the lid off this thing, it's going to be me. I think it looks pretty dang good, don't you think? The subtle grain, the organic quality of the footage. To me, it really feels like the films I know and love that were shot on film. But what I love about Film Convert Nitrate is it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. They looked at dozens of camera systems and their sensor readouts and really went into the color science and engineering of these camera systems so that with the input of just three things, you could quickly take your footage from a raw log image to something that looks really, really good. Now in shooting this, we lit the scene for F2.8, but then shot at F1.4 so we could get a bit more depth of field and some overexposure to give us more latitude in the highlights. Now I'll take Cody's final image any day over my own, but if you don't have a Cody Jones in your life to help with your filmmaking and content creation, you can still achieve quite a bit on your own with Film Convert Nitrate with Final Cut Pro. Now, I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I couldn't be more excited to have Film Convert nitrate in my filmmaking and content creation toolbox. Whether you're working in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, Film Convert has you covered. And if you'd like to add Film Convert nitrate to your toolbox, click the link at the top of the description box below and use the code MIDLAND to save 10% on your purchase. I cannot thank Film Convert enough for sponsoring this video. This was a dream project to be able to write, shoot, and edit, and I certainly hope all of you enjoyed it as much as I did. So thank you Film Convert for supporting my channel and helping me get the look and vibe I've always envisioned for my videos and for extending a discount to all the viewers of this video. That's all I've got for this one, everyone. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon, and don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.